Now in this week's Let's Talk Some Star Wars, we'll be taking a look at the results of, and your comments from, the poll that asked the question, what do you think killed Padme in Revenge of the Sith? And getting right to it, looks like 47% of you think that Palpatine was somehow responsible, while 41% say it was a broken heart or just her losing the will to live, and another 12% thought it was something else. And before we get to your comments, let me just quickly say, from the very first time I saw it some 14 years ago now, I've never been a big fan of the idea that Padme died of a broken heart, unless we're being literal, and in his anger while he was choking her, Anakin went overboard and crushed some of her internal organs, including her heart, as violent and as grim as that sounds. And if I recall right, and I do believe a couple of you mentioned this in the comments, the novelization does say that was the case, that he damaged internal organs while choking her. However, I'm more in favor of Palpatine somehow being responsible, that he's just the ultimate villain who foresaw and manipulated everything. I kind of like the idea that Palpatine was the one giving Anakin those visions of Padme dying in childbirth, because, well, he was going to kill her in childbirth. And that was because he knew Anakin would do anything, including embrace the dark side to try and save her. Yet at the same time, Palpatine had to fear that Padme might also be able to bring him back to the light. I mean, if he loves her enough to fall to the dark side, he might love her enough to come back to the light. So killing her and setting Anakin up to believe he'd been the one to do it, killed two birds with one stone, in a way. Or maybe Palpatine didn't see or set up any of it. Maybe he didn't fear Padme being able to save Anakin, and her death was a fortunate stroke of luck that he just capitalized on. After all, Palpatine didn't think Luke would have the ability to bring Anakin back to the light, and look how that worked out for him. Anyway, let's move on to your comments now. And as always, we'll start with the top-rated comment, which this time came to us from Bearded Marksman, who said, I have a theory that it was the actual birth of the twins. Imagine the energy and struggle of giving birth. Now picture giving birth to Force-sensitive twins while being injured from a Force choke and the stress of seeing what Anakin has become. And that's a very solid theory, that it was a combination of many different things, which is something a lot of people did suggest in the comments. And maybe giving birth to two so strong with the Force really played a big part in her death. Maybe it took everything she had to deliver the twins and then factor in everything else, and she just didn't have the mental or physical strength to carry on anymore. Okay, now onto this comment from Uncle Barry who said, She got a terminal case of I'm not in the original trilogy-itis. And you're absolutely right. We do know, thanks to what Leia said in Return of the Jedi, that her real mother died when she was very young, yet Leia still has images and feelings of her. However, there was technically some room to play here, and I don't know that she had to die in Revenge of the Sith. If Leia can remember her, it implies she was a couple years old when her mother died, hence she can remember her. Now sure, it's more emotional and powerful for the story or the movie if we see Padme die, which is no doubt why Lucas killed her off in Revenge of the Sith, but it would have fit continuity if Padme escaped with the twins and died a few years later off screen. In fact, she knew where Anakin's family lived on Tatooine, she'd been there before, and we know she trusted Bail Organa. So again, that could have worked and honestly makes more sense than Leia remembering her mother moments after she was born. Though yes, the new canon has explained that Leia just has an innate ability with the Force to be able to sense the memory of people in certain places. For example, when she went to Naboo in one of the new comic books, she could sense that Darth Maul had been there. So I'm guessing she somehow can sense memories of her mother or something, depending on where she is? I don't know. It's a bit strange, but I think they're trying to explain how Leia can remember her mother, even though she was a few minutes old the last time she saw her. And moving on now, there were a lot of people, and I do mean a lot, that blamed Padme's death on poor writing or George Lucas' script or other things of that nature. So what I'm going to do now is read two comments that begin to perhaps explain George's reasoning or what he was trying to accomplish with that scene, then give you my own thoughts on it as well. And we'll start with this comment from Fred Marble who said, Well, broken heart, and I know many consider it to be silly, but consider also one thing. Padme's funeral was visually inspired by a painting of Ophelia's funeral. Ophelia from Hamlet. Now, Ophelia committed suicide because she thought the man she loved, Hamlet, had gone mad, like Anakin. Conclusion, Padme's death is simply an adulterated version or watered-down version of suicide. The broken heart is more poetic and simple, but the fact is that she would have killed herself the moment she got up from the bed. She didn't want to live anymore. Just think to the line from Attack of the Clones, I'm kind of dying every day since you are back in my life, or something like that. Sorry, I watched the movie in Italian, he says. If that doesn't perfectly justify Padme's death, I don't know what does. Then there's this comment from Yoda Man who said, Padme chose to die and suffer with Anakin. The name Padme literally translates to lotus flower, which is the symbol of compassion in Buddhism. Passion means to suffer, 
and ka means with, and therefore compassion means to suffer with. Throughout the trilogy, she showed such compassion. In The Phantom Menace, she chose to go back to Naboo to suffer with her people. She chose to marry Anakin knowing they'd have to hide their marriage and love. With the death of Anakin and the birth of Vader, she chose to die with her husband. It was not because of a broken heart, but rather her compassion for Anakin that brought her that fate. Om Mani Padme Him, the jewel is in the lotus. The lotus flower rises through the mud and muck of the earth to transcend beyond. Okay, first of all here, great comments from both of you, so thank you for leaving them. And to put it far less elegantly than they just did, there was an effort by George Lucas to really make Padme's death, and the whole story of the prequels poetic and tragic, to take this to Shakespearean levels, if you will. And a lot of the times, the dialogue suffered because of this desire to make this a truly Romeo and Juliet kind of love story. Yes, it wasn't written anywhere near as well as it could have been, so I will agree with everyone who said something along those lines. However, I really don't think it was Lucas not knowing how to kill off Padme. It was more along the lines of him way overthinking it and missing 99.999% of the audience with what he was trying to show with her death at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Okay, let's move on now and get to this comment from Master Search who said, I voted for Broken Heart regardless of how lame it is. In my headcanon, I just go with complications from childbirth. I think the reason people voted mostly for Palp's involvement is because they want to believe that had something to do with it. It tells a better story if it was indeed Darth Sidious interfering somehow, and normally I would think vote for that, but I think that is just too much storytelling and wanting something to be there that isn't. And I do tend to agree because, as I said at the beginning, I too prefer the idea that Palpatine was the mastermind, and on the surface at least without understanding what Lucas was going for, her dying of a broken heart is just kind of lame. And a lot of people have come up with some great ideas or theories about just how Palpatine did it, some of which we'll be getting to soon enough. But before we do, let's get to this comment from Devin Williamson who said, if it were Palpatine, wouldn't he have also made a point to kill the twins as well? And that is a great point, especially when we factor in Obi-Wan's line from Return of the Jedi when he says to Luke, the Emperor knew as I did that if Anakin were to have any offspring, they would be a threat to him. And of course they would be, so why Palpatine didn't kill them along with Padme, unless he thought he had killed them, is a great question. And if he couldn't kill them, why isn't he relentlessly hunting them since he would know they're out there? Or maybe he is hunting them, but of course Vader wouldn't know it, and it's been behind the scenes the whole time. Either way, this is a hole in the Palpatine killed Padme theory that would need to be filled. Next up we have this comment from Benjamin Martinez who said, I agree with Cinema Wins' theory that perhaps unknowingly Anakin drained her life force to survive. And this could of course work, and work pretty well. Perhaps as he's laying there on the lava beach, he was thinking about everything he'd done and lost. Thinking about Padme and somehow he was just able to drain her life force and keep him alive long enough for Palpatine to get there. Let's now move on to this comment from James Pacheco who said, I think Palpatine was behind it. He drained Padme's life force to keep Vader alive. Padme would have distracted Vader from his Imperial duties, so he took the opportunity to not only destabilize Vader, giving into the dark side, but to eliminate a powerful political opponent at the same time. A similar thing he would do later by having Tarkin destroy Alderaan while Bela Organa was on the planet. And then there's this comment from Mr. Smallville who said, How the heck could Palpatine know Padme had died if A. He had never saw the corpse, B. Didn't know where she was, C. Didn't know what condition she was in apart from quote-unquote pregnant unless he had a hand in her demise. In other words, yeah, it's a little odd that Palpatine seemed to know for sure that she died, unless he'd played a part in it. And after he tells Vader, and Vader loses it and screams out that infamous no, that smile on Palpatine's face is a very guilty smile in my opinion. Then there's this interesting point brought up by Jar Jar Bricks, who said, There's no way it was a broken heart because her last words were those of hope for Anakin. There is good in him. And if she truly believed those words, why did she let herself die, especially having just given birth to twins? In one sense, we're supposed to believe she is completely void of any and all hope for either Anakin or her children, and that she's just giving up. Yet, in another, she says she still has hope for Anakin. And finally here, this comment from Oliver Lewis who said, It was Darth Binks that killed Padme. And though I don't think that's necessarily the case, what's fun or maybe frustrating about all this is it really feels like it could go so many different ways. I always have and always will like the Palpatine master plan theory, and as Aaliyah brought up in her comment, I did make a theory video about it a couple years back now, which I was pleasantly surprised to see someone remembered and that it got so many upvotes, 
And if you want to check it out, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Just be warned, it's an older video, but it does check out. But anyway, the more poetic or tragic explanation that she couldn't find the will to live without Anakin and basically let herself die is a great one if it had been handled or set up a bit better. Because clearly Attack of the Clones was meant to show us that Anakin and Padme were destined to be together, that nothing was going to keep them apart no matter what, and that in turn they also wouldn't be able to literally live without each other. So when what was left of Anakin heard that Padme was dead, almost all those traces that remained of him died in that very moment and he became Darth Vader fully, and there was no coming back from the dark side anymore. Not until his son Luke, a part of Padme you could say, brought him back. His love for her was the key to his fall, but also the key to his return. Again, it's very poetic and beautiful, it's just not written and shown especially well in the movies. Well, that's all I've got for this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think killed Padme, Broken Heart, Palpatine, or something else entirely. And is it something we should get a definitive answer to in a story someday? Or, in your mind, maybe we already do have a definitive answer. Whatever you think, let me know in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.